China returns to the far side of the moon for samples. At the end of last week, the Chinese Chang'e 6 mission took off from the spaceport on Hainan Island. The aim of which is to collect samples from the far side of the moon and deliver them to Earth. The mission is expected to last 53 days. This is the sixth installment of the Chang'e space program implemented by Beijing. The program concerns a mission to the moon, and its name comes from the Chinese goddess of the moon. The first missions of the Chang'e program, Chang'e 1 and Chang'e 2 included orbital flights around the Silver Globe. The third and fourth installments of the program include landings on the lunar surface, including the first ever landing on the far side. The Chang'e 5 mission and the current one are sample return missions, i.e. missions intended to return samples from the moon to Earth. In the Chang'e 5 mission, the Middle Kingdom placed two parts of an unmanned probe on the Moon, a lander and a return vehicle. The return capsule and the orbiter itself remained in orbit. The lander drilled into the lunar soil to a depth of about 2 meters, from where it collected samples of material. The material was also taken from the lunar surface. The return vehicle then flew away from the moon, using the lander as a launch pad, and connected with the orbiter, which carried the samples enclosed in the capsule to Earth. The return vehicle used a spring mechanism before starting its engines. The Chang'e 6 mission is to be similar to Chang'e 5 with the difference that sampling will take place on the side of our natural satellite far from Earth. If everything goes according to plan, scientists will study the first rocks from the far side of the Moon at the end of June. Built by scientists from the China National Space Administration CNSA. The probe is over 7 meters high and weighs 8 tons. It was carried into space by the Long March 5th rocket from the spaceport on Hainan Island in southern China. The spacecraft consists of a lunar orbiter, a lander, a launcher, and a return capsule. All samples brought from the moon so far come from the visible side. Operations conducted on the far side require a communications satellite to act as a relay station for communication between the lander and Earth. That's why China launched the QUEQIAO-2 satellite in March, which is equipped with an over 4-meter antenna, the largest of its type used in space exploration. QUEQIAO-2 orbits the Moon and awaits the arrival of Chang'e 6. Once in lunar orbit, the spacecraft will gradually descend and prepare to land in one of three pre-selected areas in a structure called the South Pole Aitken Basin. It is the largest known impact structure in the entire solar system and the oldest on the Moon. One of the selected places is the Apollo Crater. The landing is expected to take place in early June. Equipped with appropriate equipment, the lander will drill into the lunar soil and retrieve 2 kilograms of material. Some samples are also to be taken from the surface. Then, a small probe with samples will take off from the lander, which is supposed to connect with the orbiter and deliver the material to Earth. Thanks to QUEQIAO2, 
the spacecraft and Earth will remain in contact during critical moments of the mission. Chang'e 6 is expected to return to Earth around June 25. Beijing's ambitious space program assumes sending astronauts to the Moon by 2030. Around the same time, the Chinese want to bring samples of Martian soil to Earth. But before this happens, further missions from the Chang'e program will fly to the Moon. The Chang'e 7 mission is scheduled to launch in 2026, and the Chang'e 8 mission in 2028. Both are scheduled to land on the Moon's South Pole.